Why have I got a bag of frozen fruit on my craft table? Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today I'm getting a bit frosty here with perfectly imperfect mixed berries. So these are wonky but wonderful apparently. Therefore, they are junk. They are the waste berries. Nothing wrong with the berries, but they're just not pretty berries. They are wonky ones, ones that cannot be put in the be beautiful punnets on the shelves. They are berries that will never fulfill that celebrity status within the supermarket. So the supermarket very brilliantly produced bags of fruit where, you know, it's just fruit. It just doesn't look 100% perfect. Well, great. That's what we want. So I was going to go around the hedge rows and try and pick some blackberries for the purpose of dyeing paper. However, the weather was doing this. And so we are going to plan B, which is frozen fruit. So this is fairly inexpensive from, from the supermarket. And I am going to extract the darker berries out of the pack. That is going to be the blackberries and the blueberries, possibly some of the black, oh yeah, black currants. That stains, doesn't it? Let's have a go at that. Okay, so I have rescued these frosty bee lister berries from the pack that was imperfectly wonky berries and which is a really good idea but um, very very sad that we live in a world where we have to only have the perfect. We're going to immortalise these berries and turn them into a dye, a dye that we can use to stain our papers for which we will then bind into a book and keep them as treasured pages for the future. So let's have a look at how to do this. We're going to cook the berries, reduce them down into a liquid for which we can then use to dye our papers. Let's do this. Okay, we're here at the stove. I'm adding the berries. It's about a cup. We can already see the stain coming off the berries. So we've got red currants, black currants, blueberries and blackberries. So it's a complete medley. Turning the heat on, I am adding some water. So I've added enough water there to cover the berries just about. This is quite a large pan, not very many berries. I'm hopeful that we'll get a good result. I don't really want a very strong solution particularly. We'll see what we can achieve with this medley. So we're just going to let that simmer. So I'm wanting to bring them to a boil. Then I'm going to turn the heat down and leave them for about 10 minutes to and check, maybe 15 minutes slowly reduce some of the liquid down. I want a concentrated colour. You can see the dye colour coming out now. So we're going to just reduce the heat and let that simmer. So that's now on four. I'm going to let that sit there for about 20 minutes and we'll see where we are. In Here we are at 20 minutes. So you can see the blackberries have, I'm just going to put the light on, Oop. There we go. The blackberries have completely reduced in colour. Um, the liquid's reduced as well. We've got some black currants and uh, maybe blueberries that haven't yet disintegrated. And I'm I really am looking for sort of a, a mush. So I'm going to allow them to sit there, just gently simmering away for a little bit longer. I've only really agitated the pan once so I'm just going to do that again now and that's sort of where we are there is going to be sugars in this so that's another thing that we need to just sort of get our minds around and we'll just see where we are in a, I'll give it another 20 minutes I think okay here we are very steamy smells delicious this is 40 minutes in and I think that is totally fine we've got a nice dark liquid there so I'm just going to strain that off look at that beautiful ruby colour 
I'm very excited by that. That's absolutely lovely. Perfect for this season craft. Okay, so we've got a very small amount of liquid in this jam jar. Literally a very concentrated colour so I do not want to be spilling this on the craft table. I've got here a white tray, it was a kitty litter tray, um, no cats have used it, I bought it for the purpose of dying and um, then have, because it was so cheap from the pound shop I've realised that it's got this indentation so it wibbles. It might work in my favour to distribute things around but I probably Probably not. Anyway, it was very inexpensive. Then I've got some papers that have come off of the, you know, the printer, some of which have been damaged, a little bit crinkly. I've got some other papers here that are a bit old, worn and tattered. Yeah. I've got a few envelopes and I just thought this is just a very simple experiment, not on a big scale. I haven't used as much fruit as uh, you could. Um, and, and I don't know if I need to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off how I always start off, which is put, put some into the bottom of the tray or the pan. That looks very, very strong to me. So I might even take my paintbrush. Let's just have a look at the colour. OK, well, it's a beautiful colour. OK. So spreading that around then, we'll just, we'll just put it in. I'm going to loosen it up with a drop of water. And then see what we get. More. And let's just go for it. Now this water has got some salt in it. So it has it's a saline solution of sorts because I just ground a few you know it's just a bit of ground salt in there maybe half a teaspoon to a cup of water just as a preservative and I think it also aids the dye to adhere to anything Uh, like fabric and things like that you use a salt water to wash your fabric first so I'm just going with that principle I've also got to be mindful that the fruit could be oxidizing right now so the color we're seeing here may not be the color we're going to end up with so I actually probably want to work relatively quickly and if I hold it at that angle then dye that I've got will come down and I can use this dye sparingly then and just be painting this at my desk, at my craft table as opposed to trying to do it in the kitchen um, standing up for long periods of time which might not be possible for some of you and um, you know anyone with back problems or mobility issues it is something that you can do sat down just need to have a tray in which you feel that you can contain the mess and do it on a small scale we can already see we're getting a very beautiful purple color coming out so that would be the blackberries it was predominantly blackberries but there were black currants in there as well black currants always leaves a red stain red berry stain um we didn't have much fruit, so probably don't need that much to to achieve quite quite good results. So that's good because fruit can be expensive when bought like that. Certainly great if you can grow your own. Even better if you found some a windfall fruit, you know, fr fruit that is um, on the turn on the on the bushes or. Uh, I wanted to go over to my aunt's. She's got. A lot of blackberry, wild blackberry bushes and um, that's normally what I do in October but because the weather's been so horrendous we haven't been able to go and visit her um, 
there's lots of floods and things around our area. It's just weird weather at the moment, but we need the rain, but we just didn't need that amount of rain. <laughs> so we're trying to walk in our Wellington boots, wading through great big, you know, lakes of water down here in the south of England. It's a little bit flooded. Flood warnings were out yesterday over the news. And what I think I will do, where I had what was left of the mushed up fruit, I'm going to put that back in the pan with some salt water and some fabric and just see if I can achieve a very nice pale pinky mauve purple colour um, on some cotton. I've just got some soaking down here in some salt water so all I do is just put some fabric in there. I'll show you. Okay, so this was what was left in the pan and the, and the fruit and there's still some, you know, that still wants me to sit there and try and smoosh that out, but I don't want to be doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that fruit pulp out into the, the yeah. saucepan. I've got some salty water there and 100% cotton and I'm just going to put the salty water in there and then I'm going to just let my fabric sit in there and take up whatever colour it can get from the remaining waste product there. Before I had this last minute idea of, hang on, you could probably get some pink fabric off of that. So here we go, I'm just going to let that sit. I might warm it up, just um, bring bring it back to a warm, because that was cold water, and see if I can get uh, a little bit of dyed fabric there. So I'm going to leave that to sit. Warm, warm up the water. Okay, so I've left that to sit on the hob, just gently on a very, very low heat. Just... Um, allowing it to warm through and sit there. Yeah, then we can just have a look and see what uh, that, what we can achieve with that later on. But the salt water may add to fix some of the colour into the fabric and it could do the same here. So you've got to be aware you're adding uh, sugar when you cut, you know, you're doing this. So what I could do at the end is just rinse the pages off so that we haven't got anything that could potentially um, go funny in the future, anything that could go nasty in the future. We don't want any food sources in our art, really. We just want the natural stain. But if you leave res residual fruit pieces on anything, it's going to attract mould and bacteria. And we don't want that. So this is why I think adding the salt is going to help and it's just it's just an experiment so we'll add that one I've got an envelope here so I like to where possible with envelopes always make sure I get the dye inside and uh, get right into the creases of everything get an interesting piece right the way through. I'm just going to keep going. I've got some shorter pieces here off of an old notepad which I took the ring binding off of. It's a really fun thing. It's just mucking about. If you like this sort of thing, then you will be in your element just having a go. It's eco-dyeing. You're, you're using natural resources here. And the fruit that I didn't use is going to just be used um, for a dessert or a fruit crumble, something like that. Like a... Nice, um, you know, we won't waste that. So it was just bought to remove some of the blackberries, but my son doesn't like blackberries anyway, so that all works. We would probably be ending up picking them out 
of the pack anyhow. The other thing I've got is tracing paper. Now that is going to crinkle up. Let's give it something to go on. Tracing paper is a very interesting paper to work with within junk journaling. It's in inexpensive to get hold of. You often find that um, if anybody's used it or if anyone's got children where they've used tracing paper for a, a school project that they might have a pack lurking in a cupboard or in a drawer somewhere and be only too pleased to let you have it because not, you know, not everybody uses tracing paper and wouldn't have a use for it if they're not um, doing anything creative. So you might find if you ask around your friends and family, has anyone got an old pack of tracing paper? In which case, that's a good good way. So I've got I've got I'm trying to do a little art project. Anyone got got any tracing paper? Got any graph paper? Any paper that you're not using? Of course, when you alert people to finding things, they actually all of a sudden seem to find a use for these things. <laughs> oh no, not my special graph paper no I use that all the time yes that's very useful where is it haven't got a clue <laughs> so we just like to have things don't we we just like to know they're there for that time when you never know when you need some tracing paper yep like now when I'm asking for it <laughs> but if you say do you have any paper that you're not using or could spare? Do you have any graph paper or squared paper? Any tracing paper that you could that you could let me have? Because I'm going to be putting it in my journal. If you say that, it adds a bit more weight. You think, oh, oh, it's going in a journal. That's very special. That's something you're going to keep and look after. Oh, yes, let me help you with this with this project of yours. Yes, paper. Oh, lovely. I've got loads of paper. How much would you like? Totally different. Is it just just mention the word journal and and you'll find that people are more willing to help you. It's like, oh, yes, lovely. I'd like to add my paper to your time capsule endeavors. That sort of it's that. It adds I you have selected me for my spare paper for your journal because you're going to be putting it and keeping it for a, an infinite amount of time oh yeah I can help with that I can't help it if you're going to take it from me and I, then I won't have it for the purpose of not knowing what I needed it for in the first place but for a journal oh yeah yeah I'll only be only be too pleased to help you with that very strange so yeah I'll, I'll ask away and see because it's truthful and you are putting it in a journal and it hopefully will be kept for some time. It's lovely, isn't it? It's just fun. Ooh, look at that. You'll notice that the colour has completely changed. It's taking on a more blue colour from that ruby red that we were pouring on. So that has oxidised with the air maybe reacted a little bit with the salt water who knows but we are ending up with some really cool bluey mauve papers what i'm going to do is i'm going to fill this bucket with water just some cold tap water and that's and then i'll drain that off and then that will wash the papers off i don't know that i'll lose the intensity of the dye on the paper particularly isn't that just lovely Okay, so on the bottom we can see that this is the colour so far. It could go a dark grey colour, it could oxidise, it could do all sorts of things. It's never quite um, an exact science, we're never really sure. These ones had a, um, a lesser concentrate of, of the dye. I could turn them over. And anything in there could just soak down. I couldn't get that bottom one off. I am going to get some rip torn edges. I can see that the paper is struggling now because I probably should get that out. So what I'm going to do is my final sort of test. My my final thing is just pour in 
plain wa um, water, nothing in it, just to wash it really, flood it. And what I'm going to do is just go back to the kitchen, I'm going to drain all of that off, separate my papers out and dry them. Another thing to mention about the water bath and rinsing everything off is it is really easy to get the corners, nothing is sticking so I am able to get hold of the papers and be able to lift them out of the water bath without it um, tearing. Okay, here's one I'm adding to a rusty tin and um, that will take on some of the black, maybe the elements on the back, who knows. I think because they will dry so quickly in a fan oven, it's, uh, it's quite a quick way of doing it. And I'm not even shutting the door of the oven at this point because by the time I've loaded it up, some of the top ones are already dry. And, um, and then you just leave it for a few minutes, so... We are on 180, it doesn't really need to be that hot. And more often than not, I use, I do the dyeing when I've got a warm oven. So if I've been baking or I've done jacket potatoes or something, I then use the residual heat. Okay, this has come off the hob. Uh, all the bits are in there, all the fruit bits, and it has been left to warm. It's quite a nice pink colour, completely different from the blue tone I'm seeing on the papers. So I'm just going to get that out and dry it, get rid of all the fruit pieces, and meet you back at the craft table. So the dyeing process took a really long time overall, and I've been dipping into the project throughout the day. Once and now, I'm, and now I'm coming back to you. Sadly, we've lost the light, the daylight, but the results are quite unexpected. I was expecting a berry colour and this is what we've ended up with. So we have got some very nice blue tones. They are very pale in places, but I will just show you what we have got and we can then work out how we use what we've got rather than what we haven't got. So what we haven't got is a deep rich berry colour. What we have got is the most amazing blue tones which would be perfect for winter crafts, winter journals, winter scenes, icy, snow, that sort of thing. There is a slight pink hint but I'm not sure it's picking it up on the camera which is quite pleasing. Uh, you might be able to see it better on that side. So we've got mottled effects like that coming through the papers, which is lovely. So I'm quite happy about that because I think that looks really nice. And then streaks of this blue. So all I can think of is that it may be reacted with the water um, because sometimes the, the papers that were in the middle have retained the pink but anything else that came in contact with the water or the salty water solution seems to have changed colour to a pale blue. It could be that there's something in our water like a chlorine or anything to sort of sanitise the water which is ultimately reacting but we are not keeping that berry colour and I know it's possible because I've seen it being done. So the only other thing I can think is that my solution was too diluted, uh, which is fine because I was diluting it. But there are areas here where I didn't dilute it and they have still turned a bit blue. So, But I do think that the next experiment would be to have a stronger solution with no watering down until the very end because the papers didn't change colour once I then washed them and some of these are you know they've just come out of the oven some are still a bit damp and they haven't um, been ironed but yeah they are they are going to be just be squashed under some books I think there's some interesting patterning on some of this going on. I've even... I, I, I don't know what's happened there, but that is quite cool. I, I wouldn't even know how to achieve that. that I think that's um, 
I think that's where it's laid on the crinkled tin foil. Can you? Th is that even coming up? But that's a really interesting patterning there. So I will save something like that for winter journaling. And then these are the ones that ended up sort of on the top. And I don't think they're terribly in inspiring. I think we could probably go again with some of these. Not completely unexpected, because I have seen that you can get a variation of colour and blue is one of them. We didn't use blackberries, we used a medley of fruit, so there's, a, there's that as well. Uh, we don't know what the different acids are in the fruit, whether one thing's cancelled the other out. Who knows? But um, it's it was fun to a point, and then I was hopeful that I was going to get some pink tones. So this is the white, and then you can see we've got the blue, pur purpley blue colour. It's pretty, definitely pretty. Some of them have come out really nicely. So you can see, we've achieved a colour change. We have used fruit and we have made pretty papers in part. And then when they're bound in, cut down and embellished, they are just interesting background colours. Lovely, you know, I love that. Then we've got this. This was the tracing paper. Well, this fell apart completely, but I don't mind that because look at the crinkles. Wonderful texture and this ice blue colour. So that's great. But this one is the star of the show. Look at that. That is tracing paper. And I just cannot explain how that has happened but it was in the middle of the pack maybe some of it just didn't react or didn't get caught up with the water or I don't know but I'm very very pleased with that one that was worth the whole process just for that because little portions of that will be added to clusters and look really fantastic and then the fabric the fabric came out and has dried and been ironed and this is what we've got. So we've got that colour on cotton. So maybe there's something in the paper, maybe there's something in the water. But I did rinse this off very, very quickly at the end just to get some of the little bits off. Oh, I didn't want fruit bits on there left to go funny. So. I don't know guys, what do you think? But I think I, it was brilliant to, um, to bring that to you, even if it didn't give the results that I was uh, interested in. I was hoping for the more buried colours, so I need to maybe do darker fruit concentrate and see if I get the darker, richer colour berry tones for my autumn and fall uh, traveller's notebook. However, I, I'm really excited by this frosty blue colour and that is absolutely going to look beautiful in a winter journal so this is fine that will be that will be the next winter journal coming up there you're gonna have to be now because <laughs> I'm gonna have to use it <laughs> so I think what I'll do for my autumn and fall uh, traveler's notebook is tea stain papers and maybe intersperse a few of these and um Perhaps I could use some of that as well. So there we go. It's just an interesting thing. We've got absolutely loads from very little. It was only one cup of fruit. And it's created enough to do some serious journaling with. I mean, that could be a whole journal. Two signatures worth. Just there. So, yeah. It, it is an interesting experiment and um, quite a lot of fun. So there we go. I think I'll uh, we'll leave that there because I've spent quite a lot of time on it today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those because I love the crinkle. And I'm going to put those under a very heavy book and we'll flatten them all out. And then they will become journal pages. I'll be able to cut them down and use them to embellish and add digital kits and 
different ephemera pieces that we can make over the over the holidays. I hope you found that interesting and uh, that it gives you an insight into how you might go about dyeing paper. And using that technique of bringing a plant-based product to the boil, then reducing it down, leaving it to simmer for about 20 minutes, checking it, seeing if you want to have it on there any longer. That's exactly how to do avocado dye and Perhaps if you would want to, you could also do the onion skin dye where you just use the papery outer leaves of an onion skin. It's all done in exactly the same way. So that's how to do botanical dyeing. Um, it, you get different results every time I found. There's lots of variables you could use. Uh, maybe next time I won't use the salt and see if that changes things. And if you've had a go at using fruit as a stain for your papers with varying degrees of success or different results, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Let me know what you think I could have changed, what I might like to try, whether you're impressed with the colour that we achieved using a very small amount of blackberry, blueberry and black currant as a mixture in the, in the mix and then being able to create this purple pink color for the fabric which has come out all mottled absolutely lovely and really interesting different results different results that's the variation and the fun that you can expect through eco dyeing papers it's not for everybody but it is a quiet craft and it is something you can settle into over a weekend or a day off and just get lost in the process that's certainly the colourways that I'm getting out using the techniques that I use today and the products that I use from the supermarket from the frozen aisle. So that is my avocado and that is a coffee. And you can start to see how you can build up a palette of different coloured papers using natural things that you have and scraps and various, various things that you can either find or get your hands on very inexpensively to make a large quantity. So a, a scoop of what you would be otherwise having as a meal for your family, a small portion of that could also help create a journal as well. So give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you thought my efforts here were worth your time. And above everything else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.